could make or break your EPQ. So take notes. How easy you find to research, to write, and to hit the assessment objectives of the EPQ are gonna come down to how good is your EPQ question, your EPQ title. So it's really important you're thinking carefully about this. Now to get the most out of this video, there's two things I recommend you do. First, number one, is have a list of your EPQ ideas ready on front of you so you can do some analysis of those. Second is, have a look at the next slide here. I've put some example EPQ questions. Half of them are not good EPQ titles. Can you identify which ones they are? And can you think about why they're not good? If you're not sure why these ones aren't so good, it's okay, we're gonna go through it in this video. Okay, so what makes a great EPQ title or question? Well, it must be these four things. It must be interesting, must be focused, must be evaluative and researchable. And it should avoid being those four things, those corresponding words. Okay, let's go through each of these and I'll give you examples for each as well, so you have an idea of what your EPQ title should look like. So number one, your EPQ question has to be interesting. And what I mean by that is, it has to be interesting to you. You need to find it interesting. Uh, this might sound obvious, but actually, sometimes students will choose an EPQ question they think sh they should do, not one they want to do. That can be a mistake. You see, the EPQ is going to be a challenge. You're going to have to put a lot of hours into researching, to writing, to uh, getting your presentation ready, filling a production log. There's a lot of work to do to do an EPQ. So you want to have chosen a subject which you actually enjoy. You're interested in finding out about. Otherwise, you're going to make the EPQ journey a lot more difficult, a lot more of a chore. Okay, so choose something that you find interesting. Also think about it this way. At the end of the EPQ, you're gonna be doing a presentation on it to an audience. Now, if it's not something you find interesting, you're gonna find it really difficult convincing an audience that this topic is interesting. So the first thing the EPQ title should be is interesting. Make sure it is. Point two, you wanna think about the scope of your EPQ question or title. Now, it is true being too specific or too focused can be bad, but more often, questions are too general. They're trying to do too much. 5,000 words isn't actually that much. You have to remember that your arguments, your examination is going to be a lot more detailed than you're used to. That's what's going to fill up that word count, okay? You don't need to try and do everything in your question. Let's have a look at some examples. So look at these. These are all examples of EPQ questions that are just too general. They're requiring too much to be examined, making it really impossible to do the 5,000 words. What would happen if a student did a question like this is, they'd either talk about too many things so that nothing's talked about in depth, that's a big problem, or they'd actually end up zoning in on a particular area so they are doing detailed in-depth analysis, but they're not actually answering the question anymore. So both are gonna be a problem. You want to have the specificity of the question sorted from the beginning. It's also gonna make your research a lot easier because you're gonna know what things you want to research and what things you don't need to research. Let's turn these questions then into better EPQ titles. So have a look at them now. Now compare them. Can you see how now the improved ones are a lot more workable? They're gonna be easier to research. They're gonna be easier to examine because they're more specific. It can be easier to write a judgment, a conclusion about. Okay, that's step two. Make sure that your own EPQ question is focused and not too general. Third point, this is actually the most common mistake that I see students making, especially at the start. Have a look at your ideas for your EPQ right now and tell me, are they descriptive or evaluative? If you have a descriptive question, basically it's asking to explain and describe something. If you have an evaluative question, then it's asking to make a judgment, okay, to discuss something and come down on a side or a position. Your question must be evaluative. If it's not, 
you're going to automatically be losing out on a lot of marks. Okay, super important that if you phrase your question in an evaluative way, it's going to lead you to do the right kind of research, the right kind of planning of an essay and writing of that essay to make sure you're hitting the assessment objectives. So consider some examples here. Can you see that these examples are not evaluative? They're asking you to just explain or describe something. Remember, it's not an encyclopedia article. You're having to write an essay. You need to be making a judgment in conclusion. To make a judgment, there needs to be something which is being discussed. You can't just be explaining or describing for 5,000 words. So check your ones. Do you have descriptive or evaluative questions? Let's now compare these um, bad questions to improved good questions on a similar kind of topic. Okay, notice how these questions all lead the person who would have this question to do the right kind of research, to be looking up about different factors or different arguments that they're going to be discussing. They also all help you think about the idea of making a judgment, a conclusion to end your essay with. By having the right framing of your question, it's going to help you think about your research and your writing in the way that you need to to make sure your essay is excellent. So make sure your question is evaluative. And finally, point four, your EPQ needs to be researchable. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, it needs to be practical for you to conduct some independent academic research on it. There needs to be stuff out there written on the subject that you've chosen. If there's nothing written about it, that's not a question you should be doing. It's just all going to be opinion based and that's not what the EPQ is about. Similarly, if the only stuff that's written about your subject is so advanced, such a high level that it's not accessible for you, again, that's not one you should be doing. It needs to be researchable for you this year and it shouldn't be speculative. Let me show you some examples then. Consider these examples. Can you see how they're speculative and not researchable? The way the questions are focused mean that there's not going to be that much written about these things. So then what are you going to write about for 5,000 words? Consider then how if we change them slightly, we have questions which are a lot more practical in terms of researching. There's going to be stuff we can find out about them. So consider the corresponding better versions of these topics. Notice how they're better? Now, I think this is the hardest of the four tips that I've given you. And it might require you to just do some research to find out. You might not know right from the beginning whether or not a topic is going to be researchable until you give it a go. So maybe pop into Google Scholar, type in a few keywords. Is there anything out there? On your topic of choice. If you don't start to find things quite quickly, that's probably an indication it's going to be a real challenge to research. Might be better to choose a different question. Okay, so that is your fourth tip, your EPQ title. Think about it now. Is it researchable or is it speculative? And that's the four tips. Your EPQ should be interesting, focused, evaluative, and of course, researchable. Out of those four tips, which one did you find the most useful? Please subscribe for more videos to help you with your EPQ.